Good day. Topic 9, as part of the red blood cells, will involve anemia, red blood cell indices, and leukocytes. I'm Penny Nansamba, a lecturer from Makerere University, COVAB. The objectives of lecture series 9 is to 1. Define anemia. 2. Define red blood cell indices. 3. Classify anemia according to etiology and morphology. 4. Give an insight of how the body responds to anemia. 5. Highlight morphology of reticulocytes. 6. Give an insight into the enumeration of, of reticulocytes and interpretation of these associated results. Let's start with anemia. Anemia is defined as either the reduction in total red blood cells circulating in blood or a reduction in hemoglobin content of the red blood cells or both of these two conditions occurring at the same time. Processes that result in anemia, these include hemorrhage. Hemorrhage may be external, where you have a cut from your body and you lose blood that you can actually visualize. It can be internal, where there's loss of blood into the body cavities, such as the peritoneum. Hemolysis can result in anemia. It may be extravascular and it occurs when macrophages phagocytose injured red blood cells before the end of their lifespan. Or hemolysis can be intravascular where the injured red blood cells lies while in circulation. Lastly, anemia may be caused by decreased red blood cell production by the bone marrow, and this is known as a non-regenerative anemia. Quantifying anemia using red blood cell indices. The first index that we're going to look at is mean corpuscular volume, or MCV. This is defined as the average red blood cell in, sorry, it's defined as the volume of an average red blood cell in a sample. It's calculated by the PCV, that's in percent, times 10, divided by the red blood cell counts, which are given in millions per microliter. And the units of measurement are in femtoliters. An auto hemoanalyzer can measure the actual volume of a red blood cell corpuscle as it passes through the laser or electronic beam. So when you deal with hemoanalyzers, you don't need PCV. You get a very accurate measure of the mean corpuscular volume. Now let's look at the lab results of this particular patient. He's male. The red blood cell count is 3 times 10 to the power 6, or about 3 million per mil. The PCV is 40%, and the hemoglobin concentration estimated is 12 grams per deciliter. We've given the normal ranges for a hemogram in man below. We want to know what's the MCV, what's, sorry, what's the, yes, what's the MCV? or the mean corpuscular volume, and how does it relate to this clinical case? For a start, all of the values given are low. The total red blood cell count of 3 million uh, cells is low, PCV of 40% is low, and hemoglobin of 12 grams per deciliter is low. When we fit it in our formula, the mean corpuscular volume will be the PCV of 40% times 10, divided by the total red blood cell count in millions, which is 3, and we get 133 femtoliters. 
if you look at our values, in our normal reference values, this is quite high. So these red blood cells are occupying a large volume and they are macrocytic. In this slide, we are showing how macrocytes look like. The first picture was obtained from a male patient with vitamin B12 deficiency or foliate deficiency. And the macrocytes shown are larger in diameter than a normal red than a normal lymphocyte, which is also shown in that smear. And these large macrocytes lack a zone of pallor in the center. The next slide shows regenerative anemia in an equine. Some of those cells are large, some are small, and it's been defined as a nomochromic macrocytes. In this smear, we are looking at a decreased MCV or decreased mean corpuscular volume. And when this happens, we have got uh, microcytes. Let's look at the MCH, mean cell hemoglobin. This is defined as the average hemoglobin content in a single red blood cell. It's obtained by multiplying hemoglobin concentration times 10 divided by the red blood cell count in millions. The units for measurement are picograms. When autohemoanalyzers are used to measure mean corpuscular mean cell hemoglobin, the RBCs are fastlized and the free hemoglobin is measured based on its absorption with a spectrophotometer. So again, this gives us a more accurate count than when we use a formula. So let's return to the uh, lab results of the male patient and see whether we can calculate mean cell hemoglobin from this. And how does it relate to the clinical case? The MCH will be the hemoglobin concentration 12 times 10 divided by the red blood cell count, which is 3 in millions, and we get an answer of 4 picograms. This value is elevated compared to 27 to 33%, which are the normal ranges. But let's note that we cannot use this to estimate whether there is a hypochromicity or a hyperchromicity. The third and last index is MCHC, or mean cell hemoglobin concentration. This is the hemoglobin concentration per unit of red blood cell, or the hemoglobin content per unit volume in a red blood cell. It's calculated by using the concentration of hemoglobin times 100 divided by the packed cell volume. The units of measurement are grams per deciliter. Let's go back to our results and see whether we can calculate MCHC in this set of results that we got from the lab. When we calculate it, how does it relate to the clinical case? So the MCHC will be the hemoglobin concentration, 12 times 100, divided by the PCV, which is 40. And we get 30 grams per deciliter. This value is low and it shows that the cells are hypochromic. If it was increased, it would have shown that the cells are hyperchromic. So how do we define this anemia? We can describe it if you look at the results we got previously. We had an increase in mean corpuscular volume of 33 femtoliters, which is far increased when we consider that the normal mean corpuscular volume is about 80 to 96 femtoliters. 
MCH was also increased 40 picograms. And now we are seeing that MCHC or mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration is decreased, meaning that we have hypochromic cells. So we can say that the anemia in this patient is a macrocytic and hypochromic. In this slide, we see uh, cells that have got an increased MCHC value and they are showing hyperchromasia. The ones on the left are normal, the ones towards the right are large and staining more dark. The ones below are showing a decreased MCHC value or hypochromasia. They are staining much faintly as compared to normal red blood cells. And in addition, these cells are microcytic because the diameter of these red blood cells is far much smaller than that of the nucleus of a normal lymphocyte, which is shown in the picture. Now, in this chart, we are going to compare red blood cell size and hemoglobin concentration as we use the terms macrocytes, normocytes, and microcytes, hypochromic, normochromic, and hyperchromic. So the chart on the x-axis shows the variation of cell size. Towards the left, we've got large cells and macrocytes. In the middle, the normal cell size, normal sites. Towards the right, very small cell size, the microcytes. The y-axis gives us a variation in the amount of hemoglobin towards the bottom of the y-axis those cells are staining very faintly they are hypochromic towards the middle the cells are staining normal those will be normochromic and towards the top the cells are staining deeply they are hyperchromic so again, this just gives you the variation in cell size and hemoglobin concentration as we use the terms we've just learned, hypochromic, normochromic, hypochromic, microcyte, normocyte, and macrocyte. We can now classify anemia using morphology or etiology. Normocytic Normochromic anemia can occur following acute immediately after blood loss. Sometimes it also occurs when the bone marrow is depressed and not producing any more red blood cells. Small red blood cells, the microcytes, which are also hypochromic, can be seen in chronic blood loss or mineral deficiencies especially iron deficiency copper deficiency vitamin deficiency or molybdenum poisoning which inhibits the functioning of copper on the other side large red blood cells the macrocytes can be seen um we can see a mac Crocytic normochromic anemia, when we have dietary deficiencies, it may be vitamin B112 or foliate deficiency, cobalt deficiency in ruminants, or a macrocytic hypochromic anemia can be seen when we've got, um, when we are recovering from blood loss, or we see hemorrhage following injury or agglutination or massive destruction of red blood cells. And this can occur in hemorrhagic diseases like babesiosis, rift valley fever, Ebola, and so on. Now, how does the body respond to anemia? We're going to look at regenerative anemia. First, there's a decrease in oxygen levels in the bloodstream, 
and this is going to lead to the kidneys being stimulated to produce the hormone erythropoietin. Erythropoietin now stimulates the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. If the demand is high, some immature forms of red blood cells may be released into the bloodstream. And these are called reticulocytes. They are larger in volume and contain remnants of the nucleus or RNA, which we're going to term as reticulin. Now, the picture in the far right corner compares normal red blood cells to immature red blood cells or reticulocytes. So the ones at the bottom that are immature red blood cells or reticulocytes, because of the large amounts of RNA aggregates that they contain, are larger in volume than normal, and they also have a purple color, or they stay in more deeply as compared to the normal red blood cells that are staining uh, bright red. And one of them shows the fine network of uh, reticulum of RNA, which is appearing as a purple coloration. These red blood cells are called polychromatic red blood cells. So let's look in detail at the morphology of reticulocytes. They can appear as nucleated red blood cells, as shown in the oval below. Now, this will appear during staining with Romaniski stains, and at times uh, the nucleus is very visible. At times the reticulin strands may be visible, and such cells are not included in the reticulocyte counts. This nucleus will be gradually extruded out of the red blood cells. During the process of extrusion, the nucleus, um, fragments of the nucleus may remain in the red blood cell, and these are known as Howell Jolly bodies, and they're shown in the second oval. They are dark basophilic spots uh, that appear when you stain with Romaniski stains, and such cells are usually um, quickly and easily removed by the spleen. You're still in a morphology of reticulocytes. After the nucleus has been extruded, we have non-nucleated erythrocytes. They're not yet mature. They still contain the RNA. So such, er uh, such reticulocytes may have this reticulin uh, clamped closely, and this is, can be found in 0.1% of the normal reticular site counts. The chromatin may be scattered loosely within the body of the cytoplasm, as is shown in this picture. This is found in 32% of the reticular site counts. Or the chromatin may be scattered in little quantities on the periphery of the red blood cell. This is found in 60% of the normal reticulocyte counts, and these are the reticulocytes that are enumerated. Let's look again at the morphology we've just described. This red blood cell is large and is staining deep purple. It's a polychromic red blood cell. When you compare it to the smaller one that stains red, that's a normal red blood cell, this red blood cell is nucleated. Now this panel was stained with Romanovsky stains and in this case right stain was used. The panel below the stains blue was stained with methyl blue and it brings out the reticulum in the reticulocytes. We see here the reticulum is clamped together in the cytoplasm. The reticulum is loosely scattered in the cytoplasm. And lastly, the reticulum is less in quantity and it's appearing on the sides. These are the reticular sites that are counted.
during enumeration of reticulocytes. Basophilic stippling, the stealer morphology of reticulocytes. So these are spots or aggregates of reticulum that stain basophilic with Romanesque stains. And their occurrence indicates regenerative anemia or it might be due to lead poisoning. Let's look at the enumeration of reticulocytes. Reticulocyte count is given as the percentage of red blood cells is given as a percentage of red blood cells counted. And flow cytometers can enumerate reticulocytes easily. However, if these are not widely distributed, manual counts may have to be done. The blood is diluted with an equal amount of methyl blue or crystal blue and a smear made. The reticulin absorbs the blue stain and appears very visible. Now, Amila's gratitude ocular is added to the eyepiece of the microscope when examining the smear to facilitate the estimation of reticulocytes, which is given as a ratio of the total red blood cells counted in a field. We interpret the results such that if we see an increase in reticulocyte count, perhaps it's been a hemolytic anemia, bleeding, bleeding disorder, kidney disease, where there's been an increase in production of the hormone erythropoietin. Or a decreased reticulocyte count will show bone marrow failure, liver cirrhosis, anemia caused by low levels of iron or low levels of vitamin B12 or foliate, or chronic kidney disease. I would like to acknowledge the following sources of information used to compile the presentation. Thank you.